Okay, so I'm going to explain this this theorem of uh, myself and, and Daniel Litt. Um, and uh, it's about uh, the, the so it's about examples of lang bombieri outside of Mordell Lang. And it says the following. It says that there exists uh, a non-isolated trivial. So K, K is going to be the function field. Uh, y is the irreducible variety uh, over the, the complex numbers. Okay, and so there exists uh, um, uh, uh, x over k. So this is a surface surface with the following properties: one, uh, uh, x is not isotrivial. Two, uh, the Albanese of x is zero, and uh, and three, that uh, the this the canonical bundle of x is ample. Okay, so in particular, this this thing will imply that um, the the number of k points here is finite, and uh, x uh, x cannot can embed cannot embed into an abelian variety. Okay, so this is what I want to show. The most basic thing that we need to show is, is how are we going to show the Albanese is, is zero? So how do we show? We show uh, this this guy is zero. Okay, so the, the, the okay, so let, let's let's compute what the dimension of the Albanese is. So the uh, let's let's say let me just say something like this. So uh, h zero of um, uh, so let's take a to be the Albanese of, of x. Okay, so then uh, h zero of a omega one of a. Okay, so this guy is trivial. Uh, so this turns out that this is isomorphic to uh, omega one of a, and then this is at the identity tensored up with um, o of a. Uh, so this thing here is really uh, this thing is just uh, o of a, and then we do this to the dimension of a here. So this thing becomes um, h0 of uh, a o of a to the dimension of a, uh, which tells us that this thing here is one dimensional since it's a projective variety. Um, and the, in the only global functions of a projective variety are constants, this tells us that uh, the dimension of, uh, of, of a is equal to the dimension of uh, h0 of a omega 1 of a and this is equal to the dimension of uh, of and since, since we're in this this Albanese situation this is uh, dimension of X so because uh, the the pullback map of the Albanese map so we had this map off of X from X to here this induces an isomorphism on uh, global differential forms and so this becomes an, uh, an isomorphism like so okay so um, so it's enough to show uh, so the answer to this is, here's the question, and the answer is that um, uh, we can show show that uh, uh, h1 Durham of, uh, of x or is, is 0, and that's because this thing it has two pieces. This is uh, h0 of omega 1 of x uh, and uh, uh, h1 of uh, o of x. Like so, uh, and so so uh, another thing that you can do is is over C. Over the complex numbers, uh, it's enough to show maybe that that the pi one of x is is zero. So that this uh, fundamental group is zero. So if you give a simply connected variety, then the, the Albanese is trivial. Okay, so this is this is again. So this is kind of the strategy of how we're going to show this part. Um, now I want to kind of talk about these two parts here, and this kind of comes from work of Bogomolov. I mean, this this part's the, this is trivial, um, and so let me talk about these two things. Um, so there's there, what we're going to do is uh, so the, the the idea the goal is to construct construct a what I'm going to call a Bogomolov a Bogomolov a family. So there's uh, kind of this general idea that. Uh, well, okay. So let me let me just say this. So uh, this is a de let's give a definition of what this means. 
So a, a Bogomola family, a family uh, is, so let's say fix uh, a finite group G, uh, and it's going to be pi 1 of Z for uh, Z uh, smooth projective variety. Okay, uh, so then a Boga Mola family for G is the following. Uh, it's going to be a f uh, it's, it's going to be a flat map from uh, some x to some some parameter space s uh, with the following properties. Uh, so uh, this is going to be so t is going to be ir irreducible. T is irreducible and a positive dimension. Okay, this is going to be over C. Um, so, and, and take the generic fiber, sorry. All right. Okay, so T is irreducible, positive dimension, and, uh, okay, T is irreducible, positive dimension. Um, uh, so for each fiber, so each fiber, this, this, this guy, uh, has uh, ample, and um, so we can also do this for all t and t of c. Uh, omega t uh, has um, uh, pi one of uh, x t c equal to zero. Okay, and so doing this, the 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 okay. So suppose we have one of these. So. So suppose uh, we have a Bogomola family, uh, T. Bogomolov, uh, for um, G, the trivial group, the identity. OK, so then uh, our, our idea Idea. So the, the idea is to do the following, is to take uh, x to be equal to x of kappa of t. So, And then we have k to be equal to kappa of t. So then this thing here is a, uh, oh, 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 the most important part. Uh, uh, f is not rigid, not isotrivial. Okay, so that that this is actually a deformation. So, uh, deforms. Okay, <clears throat> so the idea is so then the idea of our construction um, is to uh, is to take this situation here and then um, and then this shows that uh, uh, so this produces. Uh, with ample cotangent bundle. It's not isotrivial. And um, and then there's kind of a specialization argument that you have to make that uh, H1 de Rom of um, uh, X over K will be equal to zero. Okay, so so this thing here implies our uh, a theorem here. So this is the idea. So this this comes from um, uh, again. So the idea of uh, uh, this this uh, Albanese. So so the, so so I mean this comes from the this, the, the construction of the Bogomola family. Um, so let me just say um, some some words uh, about about this. So what are the, what are the kind of things that we need to do to do this? Um, so. The, the hard part is uh, constructing, one of the hard parts is, so one of the hard parts um, uh, how do we, how does one uh, one produce x with uh, omega 1 of x at ample? Okay, uh, so it, there should be lots, um, so there's a general conjecture 
uh, that says the following. It says that, um, uh, so let's take uh, x1 to xn, uh, general type. And then what you can do is you can take, um, uh, let's take v, a subset of uh, x1 cross xn. Okay, and these guys here are going to be, uh, 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 so and then we take this to be a, a, a general a linear section of dimension, um, I think, uh, n divided by 2, I think. Um, so, but this should be, uh, uh, so take enough, so so this is the idea is to take, a, so to take uh, uh, enough hyperplane sections okay then uh, then the conjecture is that omega 1 V is ample and I think this is due to the bar I read this in a paper of his or Bogomolov okay this is kind of the general idea is that you take a bunch of uh, things of general type and then you cut them with a bunch of linear sections and then this should be uh, a hyperplane section. So it's something like this. Okay, uh, we're going to kind of use this idea um, uh, and we're, we're going to look at it in a special case. Um, so let me talk about uh, two of um, uh, two theorems that we need. So the theorem. Uh, so this is the uh, I call this uh, the big to ample machine. Okay, so let's take um, let x1 to xn have big cotangent bundle. Okay, then uh, so these are going to be smooth projective varieties, and um, if you take y a linear section. A small enough linear section of here, so this is a small enough linear section if y is a small enough linear section, uh, then this implies that uh, y has ample cotangent bundle. Ample on y. Okay, the other theorem that we need. So why is this called the, the big to ample machine? Because you have some big things and you're going to make a new ample thing out of it. Um, so is that if uh, S is a surface um, and uh, that we have that uh, this number here, if this is bigger than zero, then this implies that uh, this, this uh, class is big. Okay, so that we have this big condition before. So this is a uh, uh, we'll call this Bogomolov's. So these are both due to Bogomolov. Uh, Bogomolov's big theorem. Okay, so um, these are the two theorems that we're, we're going to want to need. Uh, we're going to use and. Um, and uh, okay, so now I, I kind of want to explain how um, the procedure for constructing a uh, 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 Bogomolov family. So the idea of the construction. Okay, there's two steps. The first step um, is to uh, so to to look at. Uh, uh, so, so to take hyperplane sections of products, so, so there's, there's this hyperplane sections of products of products um, and show or hypersurface uh, of products and uh, show the result. Uh, it has big cotangent bundle. Uh, 
Okay, the, the second step uh, uh, is the following. It says that uh, show that the, the construction uh, deforms. Okay, so uh, let me let me let me give a breakdown of step one. So step one. Okay, so um, so this is this ampleness part. Um, okay, so let me let me say this. There's kind of two parts: one A and one B. Uh, so one A and one B. Uh, so this is this ampleness, and this is a control of uh, pi 1. Um, so this part here is just a pure left shut hyperplane. Hyperplane theorem. Okay. The, the second part is um, uh, the second part I, I'm going to describe now. So uh, Okay, so there's what are the two parts? So the so there's this Bogomolov's big theorem, um, and then there's the the big to ample. Well, <laughs> I already said them. Uh, one a point one, one a point two. Uh, so this is the you're going to kind of do Bogomolov's big theorem, and then and then we use the big to ample machine. Okay. Okay. So um, okay, and then the 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 step two. Um, step two, we're going to use uh, the abstract deformations of surfaces. So uh, so we're going to kind of take. Um, so we kind of have a, a, a variety here. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we kind of take a we're taking these linear sections, and then what what you want to do is you want to kind of deform these. Okay, so we have like this guy here, and then we're going to deform it. Okay, so we have these these two guys, so we deform these hyperplane sections. Uh, hyperplanes, and show everything is cool. is cool. So this is the idea. So we have these kind of hyperplane sections in here and then we need to show that these things actually uh, deform. Okay. So um, yeah, and so this is this thing here is like uh, and so then these are these these hypersurface or hypersurface sections. Okay. So um, so let me kind of uh, say a little bit more. Um, Oh, okay, so I just need to tell you exactly. So I need to give you enough information about the proof of step one. Okay. Uh, so the idea of step one. So the idea is in step one. I need to use in order to talk about step two. Uh, so so the goal uh, is to produce. Uh, D is as a surface uh, with uh, pi one d equal to pi one x uh, for a given uh, x with uh, omega one d big. 
Okay, and also um, at the same time, uh, yeah, well, well, yeah, say so that that omega one d is going to be ample too. Uh, uh, oh, so sorry, this is going to be big. Okay, so uh, the idea is so so first we're going to take y here, and we 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 fix the we fix this up so this is going to be a three dimensional. Uh, 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 hypersurface of general type. So we just kind of uh, crank up the degree of this so that this becomes of general type. Um, so that uh, the canonical divisor of y is big. And so this is again, this is all over C. Um, and then uh, Okay, and so the idea then is to take, we take D in uh, a divisor on Y, and this is going to be an uh, effective divisor, uh, and we make sure that D is, is uh, similar to uh, a multiple where, where T is, is large, and so this thing here is, is thinking, this is, this is what we call very positive, so we think of it as, as a H0 of, of the, the sheaf associated to of having lots of sections. And so um, there's kind of a magic formula, a, a, a magic churn class formula, churn, churn magic. Uh, well, it'll say that uh, C1 of D squared minus C2 of D. And so by bogle moloss big theorem, we need to show that this is positive. And it turns out that this is equal to uh, D uh, squared times C1Y uh, plus D, uh, and then we have C1Y squared plus C2Y, or minus C2Y. And this is, I think, from uh, Riemann Roque. And, uh, and I found a reference for this, uh, uh, low, I think. Uh, and, uh, and so this is, this, is, uh, what this, is, this is going to explain this. And so uh, notice that this thing looks like t squared here, since it looks like this. And so then this thing's going to be positive for t large enough. OK, so for t large enough, this is positive. And then um, OK, so then uh, by Bogomolov, so Bogomolov's big theorem, uh, big theorem implies that uh, omega one d is big. Okay, so we have this thing on the surface which is big, and and uh, so what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to deform uh, this. So now I'm going to explain. So I now want to consider um, X, uh, which is going to be a uh, variety here. Uh, X, it, it's actually going to be a product of M guys here. And so each of these guys, uh, they're going to have ample cotangent bundle uh, and trivial albanese. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take... Um, uh, some uh, linear section here, general linear section. Um, and so then I'm going to get, so this is a linear section here. So this is V, the linear section. Uh, this, or maybe I'll call this D. D is a linear section. And then uh, this is lambda here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to deform lambda. Um, and uh, I'm going to deform it like so here to some lambda prime. And I'm going to consider the families of all these guys. So here I have this D, and now I'm going to have some other D prime here. So D prime is this thing here, so it goes around maybe. Okay, uh, okay, it goes all the way around. Okay, and I, I want to con consider this family here. Um, and and this, this thing here, th this family that I'm going to construct uh, is going to induce uh, some curly V uh, this is going to be sitting over uh, the Grassmannian uh, of codimension c uh, uh, 
hyperplanes. So we should view this thing here as, as embedded inside a projective space of dimension n. And then we're taking these things, so this is a co-dimension c. And then we're going to uh, uh, vary these sections here to produce a family. Uh, this family is going to sit inside the product of x cross uh, g, and these are co-dimensions c and n. And, um, and then I, I want to say some things about this. So these are kind of the objects that I'm going to consider. Um, and uh, let me just say what the, what the statements I, I want are. Okay, so, uh, so let, me, let me state it as a theorem. Okay, so let uh, xi uh, be varieties. So uh, for, say, i is equal to 1 up to m, uh, these are going to be varieties uh, over C. Uh, they're they're going to have that uh, omega of Xi is ample. And they're going to have that the Albanese of uh, Xi is uh, trivial, is zero. Um, this could be, say, done by saying that the, the fundamental group of uh, the complex numbers here of some point here is zero. Um, and, uh, and, and so the, the statement that I want to make is that uh, when we take x uh, here, which is the product of these things, okay, there's going to exist some L and there's going to exist some C. So this thing here is an ample line bundle uh, giving an embedding, uh, giving a, an embedding of x we'll call this phi L, into some large projective space. Uh, this is going to be a natural number, and this is going to determine the, the co-dimension of uh, the linear section that we're going to take. Okay, such that um, for this family V, uh, there exists a, a, a U uh, in here of n where the generic fiber of here uh, this this family um, v over u to u okay so this is kind of in we should view this as in um, g n minus c n and this thing uh, here is in V, and this goes into here, uh, has, is, is not isotrivial. It's non-trivial, not, and, um, uh, has, so let's just write it like this. One is non-trivial. It's actually going to be non-trivial. Two uh, has trivial Albanese, uh, and three it has that the omega of um, uh, v is ample. Okay, so v is the generic fiber here. It is generic fiber. Okay, and I guess uh, I guess it would be the generic fiber of V two. If uh, I think we don't have to worry about irreducibility issues here. Okay, so this is the statement. Um, okay, and again, V is is this family that we get by varying these uh, co-dimension C hyperplanes. Um, okay. Okay, so the proof strategy is to show that, um, so here is, here is again the situation, is that uh, here's our, our x, and it's in some large dimensional projective space, and we're, we're taking uh, sections like this, and then we're deforming these sections uh, here. Uh, this I guess goes here, and then we're taking like maybe a section here and a section here. Okay, so we're getting D and we're getting D prime. So then at some fixed D, 
okay? We can consider the embedded deformations, okay? So this corresponds to a point lambda here uh, in uh, the Grassmannian. So, so this hyperplane here, here or this li general linear, uh, let's see, uh, linear subspace, okay, of uh, Pn, okay, so this whole thing is in Pn. Um, okay, so there, the so what we're going to do is we're going to have embedded deformations, and we want to show that these embedded deformations uh, give rise to uh, first-order deformations. So the strategy is to show uh, embedded deformations, uh, deformations uh, give rise to first order or just a, let's say abstract deformation. So I guess this is all first order. Okay, so this is the strategy here. Um, and the idea is, so we're gonna do it at a point, but, um, but the existence of non-trivial first order, our non-trivial first order uh, let's say uh, abstract deformations. So we're going to look at the deformations as an abstract scheme, imply that the Kadira Spencer map is non zero at a point. At a point uh, corresponding to this, this point lambda in the Grassmannian here. Okay, and then this is going to show that the Kadira Spencer map is non zero on an entire open set. Uh, U of G n minus C n uh, by semi continuity. Okay, and actually, uh, we actually don't need to take the full gross money in. We can actually replace this parameter space with maybe a curve inside of it. And then all along this curve, we just need to show that the Kadira Spencer map is non zero. So, um, okay, that's, that's that. Um, so, how do we get a hand on these, um, these, these abstract deformations? So, we have the two things here we have these embedded deformations and we have these abstract deformations. Um, and now I'm going to say something about this. Uh, so, so uh, the first order deformations, so let's like take D here inside X. Okay, so this is just going to be a sub-variety. Uh, and wh what we're going to do is it's actually going to be a general linear section. Um, so the first order deformations uh, these are going to be equal to H1 of, of D uh, TD here. So there's kind of a correspondence between these. These are actually a, a torsor under this. Um, and uh, this is, I'm, I'm going to write down this notation so we get used to this. Uh, so gamma D of uh, TD. And so this thing here is just the global sections function, functor, and this is the, the first uh, the derived functor. Um, okay, and so uh, let me just say something here, uh, maybe down here, that uh, this gamma of D of TD, this is just gamma of D of TD. This is H0 of D of TD. TD is, is the tangent bundle. Um, okay, so then the, the embedded deformations, embedded deformations, so this is first order embedded deformations. Um, this is parameterized by H0 of D uh, n d over x like this and this is the this is the normal bundle and we want to relate these two things so uh, we want to show that this is non-zero so we want to show that somehow these give these um, so how are we going to relate these two things the way that these two things are related is from the normal sequence the sequence uh, 
So this is the defining sequence for the normal bundle. It says that uh, if I take the, the uh, uh, tangent bundle of D and I stick it inside the tangent bundle of the ambient space, but I'm going to look at the tangent bundle of the ambient space and I'm going to, I'm going to think of it as a sheaf on D, so I restrict it to D. And if I take this quotient here, then I'm going to get the normal bundle of D uh, inside X. So this is the sequence that we have. This is the sequence for the normal bundle. Um, if we take cohomology, Uh, what do we get? So, um, so we we're, we're I'm just going to write it out with the, the usual terms, and then I'll then I'll maybe move to this this R notation here in a little bit. Um, but uh, we get uh, here. I'm just going to start with this term in H zero. So we have an H zero term here. We have an H zero term here. Uh, so this is T X restricted to D. So we have an H zero of N D over X here, uh, and then we have H uh, one of uh, T D so this is all on D um, so these are as uh, uh, OD modules um, so we have this uh, and then it goes around again to uh, to let's say H1 of uh, T X restricted to D like so okay so these are related by this map that we can call beta here and we'll have a map alpha here. So the embedded deformations, which are this part, they give rise to an abstract deformation by this map. Okay, and so what we want to know is, is we really want to know is we, it's enough to show that the rank of uh, of our map is positive. So it's enough to show. Show the rank of beta is positive. Okay, so what's the rank of beta? The rank of beta is equal, well, it's the, this dimension theorem. So the rank plus the nullity is the dimension. So this is uh, the dimension of this thing minus the nullity of beta. So this is just this dimension theorem. Um, and uh, let, me just, let me just say that this, this sequence is exact. Okay, so there's this other piece here. So the the null space of this is the rank of this. So this is a h zero and d over x minus the rank of alpha. Uh, and so the idea will be that this there's two parts here. Okay. Uh, first thing says that uh, this thing here becomes unbounded as d becomes more and more ample. as D ample. Okay, so this isn't really a divisor. This could be higher codimension. I'm writing it like a divisor, but uh, we should think of it like this. And so really this is this corresponds to this L in the theorem, uh, L becoming ample. Okay. And uh, here, L is the thing that gave the embedding of X into projective space. Uh, here, this thing is bounded. This will be bounded um, as D becomes more and ample, as D becomes more and more ample. Okay, so these are the two ideas here. Um, so let me make this more precise. So the lemma that I'm going to do now says the following. It says that the rank of this map alpha from d uh, t x restricted to d to this uh, remains bounded as D becomes more, or as at L, uh, so this is equal to the line bundle, uh, the giving the embedding, uh, becomes more and more ample. Uh, 
Okay, so this is what I want to do. Um, and let me say the idea of the connection between L and D is the following. Um, D, again, is going to be uh, it's, it's this complete intersection of these these guys here, SC. So uh, these SI are these sections here of um, L. And uh, so this is on X. And uh, and and so again, you, we we know that um, that uh, I guess L is isomorphic to O of X of V of S I, something like this. So if you view this as a divisor, uh, so as this becomes ample, these pieces do, and so this whole thing uh, be this is kind of the connection between the D and the line bundle here. Um, okay, so there's this baby proof the baby case, which it doesn't really apply, but gives the, the, the important idea is, um, we'll suppose that D is a divisor. So this is kind of the prototype. Um, and we'll, the sequence that we'll look at, and this sequence actually is, is general. Uh, we have this, this ideal sequence where you take this, this ideal and then we quotient to get the, the sheaf for D. Um, but in the divisor case, this is OX minus D. So these are the functions vanishing along D. If we did plus D, this would be the poles along D. So we can take this sequence and then we can tensor up to, with, with the tangent bundle here. Uh, the tangent bundle of X. So we have OD. So here. And this thing here is equal to uh, t of x restricted to d. Okay, so this is t of x restricted to d. This is the form of it when we view it as a, a, a sheaf on uh, x. Okay, so we have this sequence and we take cohomology. Of this sequence. And when we take cohomology of the sequence, what do we get? So we'll get that uh, H0. So I'll just write out the whole thing. So H0, uh, H0, H0 here. OK, this continues to the H1s, to the H1s here, uh, H1, like so. Okay, and it continues. And so what are we we're wanting to compare? We're wanting to know about this here. And so this guy, uh, this is bounded here, and it's trapped between this guy here and this guy here. And if these two things are zero, then this would be an isomorphism. Okay, so um, if this thing was... So this, these two things being zero implies that uh, it's zero t of x. Okay, so that we have uh, this isomorphism here. Um, and so uh, it's enough to show to show this vanishing. And uh, H1. Okay, so how do we show this vanishing? So there's there's uh, two pieces. So there's Sayre duality. So Sayre duality says that HI of this thing is isomorphic to H. And so X, X, what's the dimension of X? X will be dimension R. This is R minus X. This is the dual. This is the canonical or the the the, the dualizing sheaf here. And uh, this is uh, H R minus I O of. So okay, now we're in this case where uh, we're we're looking at a divisor here. Uh, so this is this. This is a T of. Uh, 
So now this is this is where I'm applying the divisors at this thing here. Okay. So this this thing here is ample. Okay. And then this is just a coherent sheaf. Okay, and then we have this other theorem that's called Sarah vanishing. So what is Sarah vanishing says? It says that um, so if uh, it says that uh, H J of O X of D tensored with F is zero when J is positive for uh, D sufficiently ample uh, and for F any coherent sheaf. And this actually holds in any characteristic. Okay, so putting these two things together, so Sarah duality plus the Sarah vanishing imply that uh, these these two guys, uh, H I I D tensor T of X is zero for I is equal to zero and one. Okay. So um, this is the this is the baby case. This is the baby case, and so what we needed to show again uh, is we needed to show I guess that these two things are vanishing, and um, uh, so we kind of want to do some version of this 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 vanishing. Okay, so that's the baby case. Um, so the non-baby version. Let's do the non-baby version. Um, okay, so first I, I need a fact. The causal resolution of an ideal here, so now I is not in general co-dimension D here. Uh, this thing is a quasi-isomorphism. So this is a quasi-isomorphism. Um, and by quasi-isomorphism, I mean that the, the, uh, that the hypercohomology is going to be the same. Okay, so then the, the, the I guess the, the derived functor cohomology is going to be the same. So we, we're not just going to take um, uh, cohomology in, um, you know, in just the quotients of this complex. We're going to apply something and then, and then do something. Uh, apply a functor and then, and then take cohomology. So, uh, so but the, the thing is, is um, so this is a it's coherent on, uh, on X. And so this would be in negative degrees. Um, <clears throat> so this is... Uh, so this thing here, this is a causal uh, resolution by anti-ample guys. And so these are going to be powers of, um, hold on one second. <clears throat> so, uh, so these are going to be powers of, so K, J, is going to be a power of, it's going to be like L dual uh, to some power A J. Okay, so this is the dual of this. So uh, this guy was ample. This is anti ample, um, and so we're gonna we're gonna use the vanishing results there. Okay, so in in like the case that if this were um, uh, an ideal sheaf of uh, something of codimension one. Okay, so this this fact here will give us another fact. Uh, this fact is that uh, well, we can just tensor, all right, to get another resolution of the tangent sheaf, and uh, this quasi isomorphism um, will actually give us a, a spectral sequence. Okay, so it gives us the the following. It says that. Um, the derived functor, and we're just going to write out of some symbols here, uh, t of x, okay, so we have this spectral sequence here, and what does this mean? It means that we can get, a, so the there's a, there'll be a, a, a filtration on, on, on the total cohomology, and that, that filtration um, induces uh, 
so the, the you can get a hand of the graded pieces. There, there's so anytime you have a filtered object, you're going to be able to get a hold of the graded pieces. And so it says that these are the graded pieces. Of the co of the uh, uh, of the cohomology, so we don't get that this is necessarily a direct sum of, of these pieces. This is, but you get that uh, that uh, when you look at the graded object of this, that these are are these, and so the idea is that um, uh, so let's say that that uh, the graded uh, S of uh, so let's just say that the associated graded object of R gamma X of S of this uh, is isomorphic to uh, this direct sum of I plus J is equal to S of R I gamma X uh, of K J tensor T of X. Okay, so the idea will be we will get vanishing here. How are we going to use this? Uh, we'll get vanishing of, oh, sorry, this should be here. Man. That one's good. Okay, so we'll get vanishing of, um, uh, of R of uh, S of gamma X of, uh, by uh, vanishing of the graded pieces. All right. Okay. So, um, okay. So the the again, uh, this the idea is that uh, so using so the so we have that uh, R I of uh, K J. So t of x uh, is equal to zero, and so this is by by three things. So the anti ampleness of uh, these k j, uh, the uh, ser vanishing and ser duality. Um, I guess I wrote out the cases when uh, s is equal to zero and s is equal to one. Um, maybe there's something that's, that's useful to be s said here. Um, uh, so let's take uh, let's let, let me just look at the s is equal to zero case. So here the the graded piece of of this. Okay, so this becomes this direct sum. Uh, for i bigger than or equal to one, and this is because that the 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 causal complex is in negative degrees. Um, this becomes uh, h uh, r minus i of uh, k minus i uh, dual uh, tensor t x dual um, tensor omega of x. Okay, so uh, I, I guess I, this is really uh, after applying ser duality and um, after uh, uh, distributing some things. Um, and so this thing here, uh, so it was anti-ample, and so now this is ample. Um, and uh, so, so, and then this thing is just a coherent sheaf. So we're okay. And then uh, we need to check that this thing needs to be positive. So R minus I needs to be bigger than zero. Uh, the, the, uh, Yeah, so this is this is what we need. R minus i bigger than zero. Okay, so um, so let's let's think about whether this is satisfied for a second. So. Um, I is going to be positive, but I could get really big. I could be R. So what about the case when I is equal to R? So 
So I guess this needs to terminate uh, before, um, so we need to check. So I guess there's one little thing here. Okay, so the thing that we need to check is that um, uh, R minus I, uh, so the, the causal resolution to terminate uh, for um, uh, uh, before, let's say this, before we reach uh, R is equal to I. Okay. Um, the, the S is equal to do one case is similar, um, except for here, uh, where instead of having this, we'll get a, uh, so for S is equal to one, here we'll get one, and then we have plus one, and then we have, uh, this is the same, and then we have plus one here, greater than zero. Okay. So those are the, the two things that we need. Okay, so then r plus 1 minus i is bigger than 0. So um, I guess if, if it terminates before r is equal to i, then, then we're also okay. So I guess I need to check uh, how many terms are actually in the causal resolution. Okay. So that kind of, this concludes the, the proof of uh, the... Uh, the non-baby version of the the vanishing of um, uh, these guys for i is equal to one and two, um, and so again there was there was two pieces uh, of this. So again we had this trapped here, and then we needed to show that those two things were zero. Um, so there was uh, again there's. Uh, so this is this lemma that we wanted to show, and and we wanted to show that uh, the rank of this map was positive. Okay, the other part that we need to show now uh, to complete the the whole idea is that this thing is bounded, the uh, rank of uh, uh, this alpha, or sorry that um, sorry this is bounded. This is what we just showed. We we need to show that this is unbounded now. Okay, so we want to show that the the uh, okay so. Now, uh, let's do this. Uh, so the lemma is the following. Uh, it says that the dimension of H0 uh, nd over x is unbounded. Um, so this is as, uh, let's say, as L becomes, L is this the thing that gives the embedding, uh, becomes more and more ample and more ample. Okay. Again, the connection between the ampleness of this is that D is going to be a complete intersection and the, the things are good, the, the, uh, the, the varieties which are intersecting are, are essentially determined by sections of L. And the, the, yeah, so let me just write this again. The idea is that D is this complete intersection, S1, SC, and then, uh, if, and then L, uh, so uh, SI is an H0 of L, and uh, then we have that um, uh, L is really isomorphic to uh, O of X of the variety. So if we view this as a divisor now, like this for each i. And so as, these, as this becomes ample, these things become ample, and this, this kind of controls the, the cohomology of, of this guy. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, so the, the baby, uh, the, let, me, let me explain the baby case of this. Uh, baby case of the lemma. The baby case is when uh, D is co-dimension 1, as usual. Um, and here, there's kind of this uh, crazy uh, formula for um, the, the, the normal bundle. Uh, so it says that uh, this thing here is uh, O of X of D restricted to D. Uh, so these are the the, the the functions with poles at worst d along this. And then um, this is uh, really uh, od of d. And so this is this, this version's on uh, d, uh, this version's on x. 
Okay, so uh, again, what do we have? We we have this. So what are we doing here? We're we're really taking uh, uh, this sequence, right? Uh, o of uh, x of minus d. So this is the ideal sheaf, and we're looking at this quotient here, and we tensor. Uh, with uh, O of X of D, and this gives uh, the following, O of X to O of X of D here, and then we have O of X, uh, O of D with D, and this is what this means, so we're just tensoring up the sequence with uh, this, and uh, here, um, uh, uh, so this is, this is again, this is the normal, the normal sheaf, and uh, and this is the sequence that we have. So now what we'll do is we'll take cohomology of this sequence. So we we taking cohomology. Um, so we have uh, h zero of o of x, h zero of o of x of d. The thing that we're interested uh, o of x or o of d of d. Uh, here, this is uh, h0 of n of uh, d over x again. Uh, then this is uh, h1 of o of x. It continues like so. Um, and the idea, again, is that this thing and this thing, this is one-dimensional. This is bounded. Um, this thing here is huge. Okay, and so these things imply that uh, h0 of nd over x here is huge. Uh, that's the idea. Um, the non-baby case I need to think about a little bit more, um, but this is uh, essentially the, the idea of this construction. Again, so what was the whole thing? The whole point was we were going to construct this family with that's non-trivial. We're going to show this is showing non-trivial of um, these uh, these families here, like this. Okay, so well, what did we do? We we showed that it was non-zero at a point, right? Uh, so the Kodari Spencer was non-zero at a point, so it showed that we had abstract deformations. And then essentially, work of Bogomolov already allows you to cook it up so that each one of these will have uh, trivial Albanese, and so. Um, and then ampleness is an open property. So when we combine those two things, we're able to get something with uh, that's that is trivial Albanese, and uh, on a, on an open set and um, and uh, an ample cotangent bundle. So we can take a, the the generic fiber where these deformations are non-zero. So we'll take some open set where these are non-zero, and this will produce these examples where we're able to show Lang Bombieri. Uh, outside of Mordale. So that's the point. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.